Welcome to Arena. I'm Will Wheaton. And I'm Travis Oates. Tonight, Arena comes to you from the Dunes Hotel in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Unfortunately, our budget will only allow us to show you our set. They're on the move. I love their sporty outfits. Our scoring system is slightly less complicated than the rules for Baccarat. If you missed any of that, just ask your cocktail waitress for a quick review. And for the love of God, people, will you tip her, please? She's working hard for you. <laughs> cocktail. You know, if you added Sammy Davis Jr. Jr., they'd be a modern-day Rat Pack. Yeah, Vegas has totally gone to your head. Yes, it has. Uh, okay. Will you be joining me for the buffet after the show? <laughs> you have to ask? I mean, come on. Just wanted to be polite. Let's take a look at our first game, Tactical Ops. You know, that's an old Chinese proverb. Wherever you have a six hole, you'll find a mayhem. I think I got that on a fortune cookie. I'm really sorry. I'm not going to have to say six hole anymore. Can I say six hole? I, I wish you wouldn't. All right, I won't. Agent Smith takes out Maniac, and Maniac does what the kids call the dead man's float. Mm, nice form. Yeah. Here's Raven cuts him in half. I am Jack's wasted effort. Thank you, Captain Obscurity. You're welcome. They really like the name six hole, Travis. Yeah, GLC has stayed to uh, entertain the hostages. Oh, that's very thoughtful of him. A little As, puppet uh, show, maybe. Maniac shoots Tyler D in the back. I am Jack's humiliating death. Oh, good. More Fight Club. That's right. Hey, you're um, not a special snowflake. Well, you know, a little swim there to clean out the karma. Are, are you suggesting that they camp? No, I was thinking that they should defend the hostage house. Right, by camping. No, if they had picked defensive positions and they had Camper. stayed there, what I'm trying to say okay, is that they... Okay, campy McCamp, camp. You know what, maybe I should camp you. All right, go ahead to do that, camper. I'm going to watch the pirate ship sink. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Yo ho and ho. Hey, it's Rice and Clarence's on the phone for you there, Will. Okay, take a message. I'm doing a show. Okay. Fire at him. That's the mark of a very talented mech pilot, Travis. I thought the mark of a very talented mech pilot was uh, a little tattoo that says mother. Why am I even on this show? <laughs> you don't need me. You know, come on. The only reason I'm here is so the Trekkies will watch, huh? Pretty much. It has nothing to do with my insightful, hey, look, somebody died, and it was Juggalo. You know, it's funny that I say we started in the canyon, because pretty much the entire map is a canyon. Well done, Wheaton. Hey, look, that's Devil's Tower from Close Encounters. Uh, cool. You know what? Rights and Clearances now has you on speed dial. So <laughs> you should feel very proud. <laughs> Juggalo. But of course, now we're saying that mechs have sex, which we can't say on TV either. <sighs> I quit. <laughs> uh, and just snares that blue flag from right under whoever that was. That was Asmodeus, who was doing his best GLC impression. <laughs> it's not just for the ground anymore. Yeah, right, like beef. The beef people would like to talk to you. Oh. Here's Malenko doing a nice Richard Roundtree. He's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about Malenko. I can dig it. Hey, speaking of the game, here is Juggalo picking up the red flag. There's always room for Juggalo. Hey, Juggalo, it's what's for dinner. Okay, the Juggalo people want to talk to you now. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. This so reminds me of Wild Kingdom, like when you'd see that zebra who you knew was going to get it being pursued by the, by the cougar. Although the zebra is being pursued by the... Oh, never mind. It is nature's way. Absolutely. I, you know, I was particularly impressed with their mastery of jump jets, and I know I talked about it a lot during the game, but I'm going to keep talking about it, because you know what? You go, girl. I'm the host of the show. Okay. Jump jets are an often overlooked feature of smaller, lighter mechs, what I was going to say. Yeah, the smaller mechs really stood out for both teams, and I think Iron got this victory because they learned to use the terrain just slightly better than Nova, making the mountaintops and cliff tops sort of a fifth man for their team. I can't tell you how many times I've had a schoolgirl kick my butt. And they've landed in the water. They're in the water. <laughs> okay, here's Elaine and Kasumi going at it. We start round four where it's all schoolgirl all the time. And she's going right at it by giving Helena what for. We're still on Arena, right? I mm -hmm. thought we were on Cinemax. There. You hit that environment. Hit, hit it. it. Lesson from Helena. Get it, schoolgirl? Would you, would you say she got schooled? Yes, I would. Would you say that there were two girls fighting each other? Yes. What? Yes, actually, I would. Oh! Oh, oh, oh in a bit! Oh. Regardless, <laughs> you know what would make this a lot better? Yeah. The water. Yeah, absolutely. Kasumi. In addition to giving us a wonderfully bouncy graphics engine, th thank you personally from me. Please open your arena scoring textbooks to chapter 23, the MVP. To determine who our MVP is, we total up all of our players' kill-to-death ratios. Then we add in any objectives they've secured, like planting or defusing a bomb or scoring a perfect victory in Dead or Alive 3. We then feed all of this information into a giant industrial blender and pour the results out on a cookie sheet. We bake at 425 for 15 minutes, and then we take a look at that cookie sheet and see if we have our MVP. GLC from Team Iron. Yum. To find out who our MVP is, we look at all our players' kill-to-death ratios and add in any 
objectives they've secured, like rescuing a hostage, capturing a flag, or scoring a perfect victory in Dead or Alive 3. Once we have those numbers, we write them on a Kino card. We then give that Kino card to a runner. She takes it to a well-connected pit boss, who then hands it to a trained monkey named Mr. Biggles. And he brings back the card with her MVP and a chance to win a million dollars! Mr. Biggles likes Will. To find out who our MVP is, we take all of our players' kill-to-death ratios and add in any objective points they've secured for capturing flags or getting perfect victories in Capcom versus SNK. We then take this information, write it on a $1 bill, and give it to our favorite exotic dancer at a local watering hole. She then gives us a Jeep thrill, gives us back the dollar bill, we wash it, and then she tells us who our MVP is. To find out who our MVP is, we take all of our players' kill-to-death ratios, add in any objectives they've secured, like capturing flags or scoring a perfect victory, in Godzilla. We then take that information, pretend it's not going to be Team UMM, <laughs> and give it to our hard-working production assistant, Brian Malley. Malley then takes that data sheet, goes on a three-day drinking binge with midgets and a donkey. When he sobers up, he cleans his hotel room and discovers that the MVP has been tattooed on his forehead. My team. To find out who our MVP is, we take Ashcroftian look at all of our players' individual stats. We take their kills to death ratios, and we add in any objectives they've secured, like capturing a flag or scoring a perfect victory in Capcom versus SNK. We then take the information and give it to an old naked man who lives in a cave. He looks at it and tells us who our MVP is. We also get the occasional bit of enlightenment, which is also very nice. And remember, people, these are all 3D models in a computer game. None of this is real. Sadly, this includes the cookie, which won't stop Travis from trying to eat it. Hold it. Does this coat make me look fat or something? Is that a fat joke? Was it a fat joke? Mm. Hmm. Log on to our message board and let us know. <laughs> For Travis Oates, I'm Will Wheaton. You know what I love about this game more than anything else? No matter what happens, you're going to see a girl go down. <laughs> Cliff, oh, wait, she's talking. What? I started out really hating Dead or Alive 3, but over the last few matches, it's really grown on me. It's a pretty cool game. Well, that's great. Um, unfortunately, uh, we won't be using it anymore. Uh -huh. What? Why? Well, it turns out we offended some people. <laughs> what? what could possibly be offensive about watching two hot chicks dressed up in schoolgirl outfits fight each other? And who's going to end up at the Motel Craptastic downtown with me and Travis? Ah! Always split aces and eights, always bet on black, and none of this is real. Tonight, we are proud to bring you the Halo National Championship Finals. I'm really excited about this because it's very much like calling the World Cup or the Stanley Cup Finals. Dude, don't say that. If the network realizes that, they're going to get professional announcers. What are we? We're gamers who got lucky. Can I get some Halo music, folks? That be all right? Check it out. You know, the truth is, they're actually in the green room playing bop it bass. School is back in session, and I'm your teacher. We'd also like to remind you that all the action you saw tonight took place inside an Xbox. If you missed any of that, <laughs> you've got nobody but yourself to blame, mister, and don't give me that look. Oh, you're so hostile. You know, we could keep talking about this forever, but I'm under the distinct impression that the kids at home would like to actually see the game. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Jim Jim Binks is on the offensive for Team Half and Half, uh, looking surprisingly masculine in that moo moo. Uh, I think it's some kind of a nightgown. Okay, maybe it's a house coat. Well, it doesn't matter because Stan <laughs> smacks him down. <laughs> Meanwhile, Frostbite has managed to pick up the Team Half and Half flag. Uh, while the Team Half and Half what? The Half and Half flag. Okay, just checking. <laughs> this, this is like uh, that the Droopy cartoon where there's a thousand Droopies. There's you like know, a thousand Jim Jim Binks. It is a Clone War, so. Oh, that's true. Exactly. Can we say Clone War? Uh, I don't think we can, but we just did. Oh, good. All right, that. <laughs> That's don't. strange. Maybe I just want you two to die, and that's why I'm putting them oh, into what combat. What a terrible thing to say. They help out children. From uh, Travis's new best friend, you two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and who goes down? Yeah, uh, you two. Just like Bono in a hotel room in Munich. <laughs> Stain Boogeyman <laughs> continues. It's Bono, by the way. Stain <laughs> Boogeyman <laughs> continues to... What? Jim Jim Binks, who who's nowhere near that flag, must be using some kind of super running powers. All of America's going to watch them cry. We can't have that. Well, I can't remember the last time we had such a close game on Arena. Yeah, I think you'd have to go way back to the pre-Team Iron era to find that. Well, this was a very exciting match to watch, and I think the players all played really well. So listen up, potential Arena combatants. If you master the finer points of Jedi Knight, you could be an MVP candidate. Who are you talking to? My fans. Plural? <laughs> Why don't you say something to your fans? 
Mm, they wouldn't hear me. Arena's not on in prisons yet. <laughs> Too much information. Thank you, Eaton. Listen, prisoners are a strong fan base. You should cultivate them. Mech pilots travel here from across the galaxy to hone their piloting skills and eat cheesy fries. How do you know inside that cockpit he could be wearing a cocktail dress? Get it? Cockpit? Cocktail? cocktail. It's nice. It's uh, alliteration. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Warms the cockles of my heart. Hello, Team Half and Half. My name is Will. I'm the host of Arena. You might want to watch the guys taking your flags. <laughs> oh, lights his butt on fire. Hi, Jim Jim Binks. My name's Will. I'm the host of Arena. <laughs> you might want to use your jump jets to get out of the way, big guy, because you got the entire team going after you. You're in a lightweight mech. You're not safe. Turns out water doesn't stop missiles in laser fire. Team UMM takes round one. Oh, wow. Zero kills. We rock. Zero kills. Uh, there's the drone running into uh, the team half and half based, and he runs right around Message Gnome like he was like he wasn't even there. Hey, Message Gnome, this is Travis Oates, one of the hosts of Arena. Will Wheaton thinks that you should get your head out of your butt. Goes down. Hi, Jim Jim Binks. This is Will Wheaton. I co-host Arena with Travis Oates. You should try to run around faster. Maybe use some jump jets. <laughs> Does he know he has jump jet? Yeah. Meanwhile, look, here's the drone again with the flag again. And it looks like he's going to score again. again as time runs out on round two. You sit okay. there and you blow people up. Okay. That's all you gotta do. Got it. <laughs> oh, fart monster goes down. I just don't, I don't feel bad about that. I really don't. It's the name, fart monster. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I feel a bit of a, a schadenfreude. When fart, when fart monster goes down. <laughs> wow, uh, just a minute, let me get my German-English dictionary. Uh, okay, call why the, don't call you the do round, that, won't you, you while I look this up? In his butt. Okay, I just looked that up, uh, and uh, you should be ashamed. That's all I'm going to say. Ashamed. Hey, at least I don't have a glass coffee table. Okay. Uh, you know, I just want to say, this is more like it. I know we're still in 2D, unfortunately, uh, but it's still two hot chicks, sweaty, fighting it out in the desert. That's what life is all about. Uh, as you know, every time I go to a wishing well, and I and I and I and I and I and I, and I knock over some kid and take his quarter, and I throw that quarter into the well, I say, "Magic wishing well." I want to see two hot chicks in skimp, skimpy clothes fight it out in the desert. Well, she keeps diving for his crotch. Yeah, uh, is that oh, kosher? Oh, uh, well, I, I, you know what's really important is if it's Honda kosher. Oh, that's not gonna make muster. Uh, <laughs> um, meanwhile... It's not going to make muster? Yeah, that's a military term. How does something term. make muster? Not make mustard. Oh, what'd you say? Muster. Oh, I have to say, as a long-time video game player, I've wanted to see my <laughs> go down for a long time, too. All right. Oh, two guys? I have absolutely no interest in watching this round. Travis, yes. go ahead, you call All right. Uh, we have one guy hitting the other guy. I'm gonna One's go get a, a big drink. fat guy, which I respect on some level. Uh, the hey, other is E-Honda from guy. the fat side? E Honda is from the fat side. Yes, he is. Good for him. He is the epitome of the fat side, to be honest with you. <laughs> Ken and e Attention, Honda. teams. My name is Will Wheaton. I'm one of the co hosts of Arena. Please fight with chicks in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Ken's for UMM, and it's Doll Seam for half and half. So there you go. You know, I've always called it, I always called him Dollism. Did you? Yeah. Well, that just shows how ignorant you are of the Indian culture. It's absolutely true. That or perhaps it's because I'm dyslexic. <laughs> oh, I'd feel sorry for you if that was true. And look oh, at that! Oh, hey, speaking of things that are true, Ken takes Doll Seam down, and uh, this round goes to Team UMM. Yeah, it's pretty clear that they spent the bulk of the 90s indoors. This leaves us with only our MVP point to award. Can UMM make it a shutout? Is the sun going to rise tomorrow? I was told to say that it's, I owe it all to the teamwork and the team, but really I believe that, you know, worked good as a team, um, good communication, uh, got our game plan together pretty well. Okay, you are not the boss of me. Okay. Players in Jedi Outcast also start with a lightsaber and force abilities like high speed running, jumping, pushing, and really cool lightsaber defense techniques. And you don't even have to spend any time with Frank Oz to master them. Okay, now who's being obscure? That would be me. Very good. Uh, suddenly we're calling a baseball game in 1951. You know, these kids look crazy. Players are flying down the catwalk using the force to gain some extra speed. And uh, Oracle uh, 
fly flies right off the catwalk. I regret nothing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Scallywag <laughs> flies right off and joins Oracle at the bottom is of the abyss. Is that something going on? Uh, it, maybe they don't know they're supposed to stay on the catwalk. Yeah, maybe there's some kind of big party going on down there that we haven't been invited to. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> oh, uh, all right, now they're going to have to fight it out here because with both flags out of their bases, neither team can score. Well, as long I was gonna well, say, as long as Oracle can stay on the catwalk. Ah, uh, but it turns out he can't. <laughs> so that returns the red flag, and the drone will score, and UMM wins the round. Space Monkey will stay on defense to start round three. Good for Space Monkey. We love him. Oracle is still right on stain. He really likes swinging that lightsaber like a little girl. Well, at least he hasn't uh, jumped into the abyss yet. yet. Away, Oracle falls. Hey, way to not fall off. Yet. yet. <laughs> All right, Stained has jumped right back into the PK base and picked up the blue flag. He is on his way back, and here is Baba Booey. That must be one heck of a party. Yeah, you know what? I'm kind of itching to join them. It's just, just a game, Will. What do you mean the force isn't real? <laughs> Turns out not really. Well, I've wasted my life. <laughs> Speaking of wasted lives, <laughs> will you cut that out? <laughs> uh, of UMM's players just outmatched everyone on Team PK. I think that if PK had spent more time playing the game and less time at the party, they may have been more of a threat to UMM. Well, I hear in their defense that there was fondue at the party. And jello. <laughs> and there's always room for jello, especially when it's dipped in the fondue. Oh! That is <laughs> such a horrible. Can you do that reaction again? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the gameplay. Ugh, jello and cheese, bad. How about the force? Let's go crash the party. Good idea. <laughs> In each match, there are five possible points to be won. Each match is broken up into three games, which are broken into three rounds. The team which wins the most points will advance to the next match. Points are awarded based on the following criteria. Each game is worth one point. The team with the most total accumulated kills will win one point. The team with the most valuable player won the final point. Ha <laughs> ha! Wow! Thank you. That's like that guy that used to do the Federal Express commercials. I know. <laughs> hey, if you missed any of that, don't feel too badly. George W. Bush couldn't follow it either. One of our players is really a penguin. Did you spot him? I did, but I'll never tell. Well, that's good to know. You know, we could pronounce it um, but turns out that sounds really stupid. Okay. Well, here is the drone entering his own base. There's nobody around there, so he's easily going to score. Oh, hey, you know, somebody worked hard to build that building. Man, I'll tell you, the lack of care shown for building the Mech Warrior 4 is probably the biggest problem with these kids today. Oh, oh. look! More damage to the buildings! People, what about the buildings? Don't we care about the buildings? I certainly hope so. You know, I just gotta say, these are very nice shots of all the guys running around, and we're completely ignoring them like they're not even there. I apologize. Hey, look, the game! This vulture's gone to heaven. What? Uh, that's a Pixies reference. Oh, man, could you be a little bit more obscure for me? I'll try. Okay. Uh, here's the drone running past Space Monkey and scoring for UMM. Is that from something? Because that would be really obscure. PK is playing this round for MVP and total accumulated kills points only. Too bad they don't get style points, because I'd give them a 10. What are you, a French ice dancing judge? <laughs> that's... Okay, that's more obscure. Thank you, Will. Uh, you know what? I try to make uh -huh. you happy, because we have that kind of dysfunctional relationship. Back in PK's base, Zoolander attempts to guard the blue flag, but the drone sweeps in wow. and grabs it right from between his legs. Yoink! Metaphorically. Welcome back to Arena. During our break, Travis and I went to the party at the bottom of the abyss in our Jedi Knight arena, and I must say, it went off. Yeah, I can't believe I've never had cheese-covered jello before. It's considered a delicacy in the Ozarks. Goes very well with possum and moonshine. Yeah, way to offend an entire demographic. I think, I think it's okay. The people that I would have offended don't really have shoes, much less a television. Okay, keep we'll it going. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Right. This game brings the classic characters from Capcom and SNK together in a game which is cleverly titled Capcom versus SNK. That is clever. Yes. Each team will select one pair of player to compete in his game, and the winner will earn our final game point for his <laughs> team. Our teams have made their selection, so let's head back into the arena. All right, the drone for Team UMM is playing as Mai, and Zoolander for Team PK is playing as Bison. Bison comes right out of the gate. Uh, looks like he's beating the... Yeah, is it Mai uh, or May? It's uh, Mai my, my or May. Well, Not the round too. goes to Bison anyway. Good thing he finished before the ship came in. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Now, now, now the ship is docked and unloaded Kim. As uh, Bison and Kim go head-to-head uh, -head here in round two. Oh, look, they put up flags. That's nice. You know, it's good to decorate the area up. You know, people when are... you're trying to have a fight, could people just stay the heck out of your way? Yeah. Hi, you know what? I'm glad you want to put us on TV here with a little platform and all, but we're playing for points. Uh, Bison is absolutely dominating uh, this game, and he takes round two easily. 
I, I wonder, do you think uh, uh, Drone and Team UMM are even going to challenge in this game, Travis? I'm not sure. It seems oh, very unlikely. But he keeps hey, it's switching Ken. Remember to him from Street Fighter? Oh, yeah. Wasn't that done in, uh, what, 1984? I think it was. It was right there, right around the time of Combat and Rally X. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bison comes back with a big hit on Ken. As Ken goes down, apparently the boat's unloaded everything they have to unload for this yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I think Ken's pretty much unloaded everything he's going to Whoa, unload. hey, Bison with a little disappearing move like that. That was pretty excited. Oh, actually, Both. this is close. This yeah, is close. Yeah, Ken, Ken has come back. Uh, the, this round's going to go to whoever puts in the next hit. I'm predicting it right now. Okay. I. Oh, and I call the move Bison. Well, looks like Team PK found a game they like. Yeah, I think they turned it up a notch when they saw the tanker and the news crew arrive. Yeah, that always gets me going. <laughs> this was such a glaring mismatch, but there is some nice poetic justice in it as well. Zoolander just never found his game in Jedi or Mech Warrior, while the drone really distinguished himself in those contests. Yeah, it's nice to see the tables turned, even if it was for only one game. All right, let's take a look at our arena scoreboard and see who goes on to the next match and who's Ryan Leaf. <laughs> Uh, a full listing of Will's obscure references can be found on our website, by the way. Thank you very much, Tyler. We at Arena are looking forward to a long and kickback-filled relationship with you. Really? No. No, I just, I just always wanted to say kickback-filled. Well, looks like you got your wish. If you'd like to get in on the kickback-filled action, we're, we're going to have uh, a big mess. Yep, body parts everywhere. Okay, the bomb's behind, behind you. you. Acubus. There you oh, oh, hey, look, okay. there's the bomb. <laughs> Ouch. You know, if you've gotten to the bomb site just a few seconds earlier mm -hmm. or uh, paid any attention to the bomb at all, <laughs> we might have seen a very different result. What we have here is a good old fashioned game of cat and mouse, but with uh, guns and without cats or mice. Good analogy, Travis. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Well, okay, with that kill, 808 Strafe is the last remaining member for Team Steel, and SOB is the last remaining member for Team Anvil. Now it's a game of cat and mouse. With but with guns. guns, yeah, and and without cat and mice. But but that's two people now. Oh right. Defensive <laughs> moves there as he takes down SOB. That's, where's the nolly workout? Yeah, while he's cover, he's covering his teammate. Oh. All right, 808 Strafe walks it in. He shoots. He scores. I'm so depressed. The hallowed pantheon of modern classics. Oh, what are we on yeah. PBS now? Yes, we are. This week on Great Performances, PBS presents Black Warrior. Black Warrior Black, 4? Yeah. Black Warrior 4, Black Knight. Yeah, well, you're I destined for up. PBS. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's start round one. <laughs> no, no. No, SOB gets one last shot off, and 808 Strafe goes Whoa. down. Whoa, there goes SOB. It looks like he had an internal ammo explosion. I had one of those once, you know. Uh, I remember it was during <laughs> our road trip to Vegas. Oh, poor Gringo. He just backed right into D-Money. I don't know. D-Money's kind of hot, but I do feel bad for Gringo. Really? No. I didn't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Let's watch round two. That was a tough round for D-Money. Yeah, the only thing worse than being surrounded by three enemy mechs is being surrounded by four enemy mechs. Or four Trekkies. Oh, it's funny because it's true. Let's watch round three. I'm afraid SOB is uh, on his way out. Oh, he's getting it from all sides. He's Missiles, getting... lasers. I think I just saw somebody throw a tree at him. Okay, what's with the smaller mech trying to repeatedly ram the larger mech? You know, I used to have a dog that did that. We got rid of it. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Team Steel wins the... Hi, my name is Josh Engel, and this week's most valuable player. And the reason I'm the MVP is because I like to win. And the key to winning is teamwork because without a good team, you're not going to be able to do well in these games. Uh, there's no I in team, so that's the bottom line. It is so true that there's no I in team. Uh, that means that Team Steel gets the MVP point, and they will take this week's match 4-1. to one. Welcome to Arena. I'm Will Wheaton. And I'm Travis Outs. Tonight on Arena, Team UMM hope to face down their third challenger. Trouble is, challenger didn't show up. Turns out that Team UMM is just too darn good. Yes. A bunch of babies. <laughs> well, rather than send UMM home to wait for a non-chicken challenger and force you, our loyal audience, to watch reruns of Make Room for Travis. Hey, hey, that show is huge in Newfoundland, okay? Oh, once again, you make my point better than I ever could. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. so rather than send them home empty-handed, we gathered whomever happened to be hanging around at the time, combined them with some UMM alternates, and cobbled together for you Team Leftovers. <laughs> Clever name. Well, I can't take credit for that much as I'd like to. <laughs> Do you think that we'll be able to get through that without one lame Godzilla joke? Well, we've managed to make it through 12 shows without a single lame joke, right? Ah! Hmm. Oh. Maybe we should just go to the score. Okay. If you missed any of that, you should ask the team that didn't show up. I hear they have some free time. <laughs> Let's meet the players. Dustin Dudgeon. Nitz. Tyler King. Alapex. Don Bowie. Gerbil Boy. Derek Arrington. Connor. 
You know, they're a plucky bunch of kids. Except that Connor. He looks downright spooky. It's like Mad Max meets the birdcage. Yeah, but with fewer cars. <laughs> Our first game tonight is Jedi Outcast. Jedi Outcast adds in something very unique to the Star Wars universe. Annoying ancillary characters are why they only appeal to children, alienate, and irritate the genre's core audience. Oh, that's not unique to Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about the Force. Ah, the Force. All right, we'll begin round one with our good friend Alapex for Team Leftovers and our not quite as good friend Stained Boogeyman for and UMM. And Gerbil Boy who's just got excited. You know what I like about Gerbil Boy is that he looks like his name. Uh, I, th I think sure. that's I think that's nice and entertaining. I think everyone should look like Meanwhile, their name. Meanwhile, we have Alapex who's just stealed the blue flag and that's has been blown away. Alaplex, Alapex, whatever right, I say, that's what it is. I'm a host, damn it. Oh, excuse me. Here's Stained Boogeyman with a red flag for UMM and Alapex. Four team leftovers heading into the blue base. He uh, does a little force jumpy jumpy and uh, picks up the blue flag. I'm gonna call him Betsy. Here, here goes Betsy with the blue flag who's opened up every door in the facility, which is important. It's very nice to do that. It's very important. It's like leaving all the lights on before you leave the house. Hey, is sure. Betsy what they call you in prison? And fat people can't jump? I'm saying that if it was me, I would probably be laying down and having a donut right now. You know, actually, I've seen you handle your lightsaber, and it's very impressive. <laughs> oh! I, that, that's all. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Thank you, everybody. That. Oh, gerbil Boy goes down. Stain Boogeyman scores. Round one goes to Team UMM. Where is that rocket launcher? It says 6 to 0. That's terrible. And we start round two with Connor hey, showing his nice lightsaber. Helmet. And Nitz. Ah, uh, Nitz. I remember Nitz. From where? Ah, uh, camp. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you guys spend a lot of time together at camp? Not really. Nitz wasn't very popular. <laughs> and there's good Betsy with the blue flag. That's Alopex. Sure, you say Alopex, I say Betsy. Okay, very nice. Uh, you know, you're on the outside now. You don't have to keep doing that. <laughs> Alopex for Team Leftovers carries the uh, blue flag all the way back to his own base, but uh, he's run into some jumping trouble again. What is it yeah. with these guys in the jumping trouble? I, I know, played for this some game. Reason, jumping is not, not hard. For uh, some reason, uh, Team Leftovers is having problems getting it up. Hmm. I'm sorry. That sounded wrong. Uh, getting up. Getting it up. Right. Up getting. Keep going. Hmm. Dig that hole a little deeper. You know, there's only so much I can do. They're running around with long, glowing <laughs> lightsabers. St One man's smart is another man's cowardly, I guess. Maybe you can be smart and cowardly at the same time. Hmm. Hmm. Let's think about that for a moment. Stained is up around the corner. There's a force field there for some doing, odd doing reason. nothing. But he's going to go back and camp out with it. Oh. No, 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 he's not. Wow, that was really cool. So, Stained Boogeyman went to go do the same exact thing he'd done in the previous round, camping, hiding behind the force field, but Gerbil Boy says, no way, I'm going to come in here and stop you from doing that, mister, and how come you never call me? You said it wasn't going to be a one-night thing. Well, there you go. Another man's cool is one man's cowardly again. Uh, speaking yeah. of cool, uh, Stain did ultimately score for Team UMM, and they have the one nothing lead right now. Well, I would imagine if they scored, the game's pretty much over, isn't it? UMM has the early lead. We'll see if leftovers can catch up, huh? When Arena returns. Right, you, you put catch up on leftovers. Ah, that's why. Right. Team UMM swept all three rounds of Jedi Outcast, taking our first game point. It's not so much that they swept all three rounds, making leftovers look like little sissy b****, but then I get to say little sissy b****. Actually, you don't get to say little sissy b****. They bleep it out. Well, why is it in the script who writes this I do so you just wrote that yep and I wrote that and this and I'm about to write this, this line, line here, here. Yeah. okay yeah okay this is really messing with my head <laughs> I knew that it would do you want to know what you say next no, no. <laughs> I could go on owning Travis forever but somehow I think it's not as amusing to the audience as it is to me so I guess we should start our next game it's Mech Warrior 4 Black Knight our arena is called can we get started? I, I think the players are getting uncomfortable sitting in their mechs. Getting uncomfortable sitting in their mechs? Dude, lame. Well, uh, actually, you wrote it, so. Oh, Apex, uh, oh, had managed had, to pick up the blue flag. Yeah, and, and went down. Just, uh, just took him about, I think, two and a half seconds. Nicely done. Here's Gerbil Boy on his way in. Um, completely avoids the blue flag and decides to run right into Tactical Frostbite to get melted into slag what instead. I, what what I an liked odd there, strategy. What I liked there is that when he fired, he fired away from the mech instead of toward the mech, which was good. 
been a while. Yeah. Hey, uh, how's the wife? She's doing really well. I was talking to her on the phone the yeah. other day. She said she's enjoying her new job. That's great. Yeah, she loves a lot. How's Cassie? Cassie's great. Uh, oh, you good. know, as you know, uh, she has uh, just finished up uh, taking some classes. Yeah, that's she's right. Very happy. Maybe you know now would probably be a good time to give a, a nice shout out to the fat side and oh, everybody yeah, on the, the fat message side board. Is there. Great. The message board people are great, by the way. Uh, what's an eight-letter word for destructible? Uh, leftovers. Mm, thank you, thank you. I'm just uh, just doing a crossword puzzle here. Uh, the and who doesn't? Yeah, well, uh, team leftovers. Oh, hey! Oh, 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 oh! Team leftovers scored! Team oh. leftovers scored! Team leftovers scored! I, I, uh, I think uh, I, ju I literally I, just wet myself. Yeah, I think I just wet yourself too. Has picked up the blue flag and uh, runs right there to tactical. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good while it lasted. The drone moves uh, on here. Meanwhile, look, look, Connor's moving again. Uh, that's oh. just bizarre for How me. How did you it's miss? An... Oh. He was right oh. next to him, and he missed with miss. Oh, we kind of had to run a gauntlet just to even get to the flag. When they were all just the three of them playing defense, it was like a brick wall. Like running straight into them half the time. It was crazy. And I think our strategy was pretty sound. I give my performance an F minus. We're the hosts. We give the grades. How about a Q? How about an umlaut? Oh, oh, how about the sign for pi? Yeah, you get the sign for pi. We are looking at another UMM blowout. Will leftovers get warmed up? Huh? We'll find out when Arena returns. Welcome back to Team UMM is slaughtering leftovers on Arena. Before the break, which I hoped you watched, you TV thieves, yeah. Team UMM continued to treat leftovers like a new old pair at the Kennedy compound. Leftovers still has a chance to leave with a bit of their dignity tonight in our final game, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. Now, an interesting thing has happened tonight. Will and I have talked so much that we're actually what is known on television as long. Yeah, and it's not the way I generally like to be considered long. Ha <laughs> ha, you wish. So our teams have already played two rounds of Godzilla with each team earning a victory. Rather than show you a little bit of each round, we're gonna show you the entire tie-breaking round. Hey, that sounds exciting. Hey, I can only do so much with what I'm given, okay? It's true. Well, here is the final round, as promised. That's a Godzilla 2000 putting the hurt on Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla 2000 is Betsy from Team Leftovers, and Mecha Godzilla is the drone from Team UMM. Gosh, Travis, who do you think's gonna win? Do you think they play games ever in real life? Uh, I think Monopoly. Ah, uh, that's true. You yeah. know, Monopoly on the old Sega Genesis, a lot of fun. You, the hat actually and, walked. And I hear Nitz is really good at Twister. Uh, Mecha Godzilla has taken probably two real hits, and Godzilla 2000 is nearly down to nothing as he goes right back into the energy fence. I wonder why it's okay that they're destroying all these buildings, but they're protecting the ones on the other side of the energy fence. You know what's, what's really weird is the buildings on this side of the energy fence, it's, uh -huh. the, it's the former corporate headquarters of Enron, Tyco, and Worldcom. And I think, <laughs> and I think, I think actually, I think Global Crossing had, a, had, a, had an office there. Well, well, that's good. Uh, yeah, so the buildings are completely vacant. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah. Meanwhile, Godzilla 2000 is just... just wailing on oh. Mecha Godzilla. You know, I would love it if someone would come in and maybe just give a little challenge, you know, to Team UMM. Oh, I think that would be nice. Sad. I'm going to the zoo to watch monkeys fling poo at each other. Can I come? Yes, bring a hat. Okay. Let's recap our scores and see just how far back in the fridge Leftovers is. UMM took all three rounds of Jedi Outcast without letting Leftovers even score once in the game. Leftovers really came alive for MechWarrior, though, capturing one flag as they lost to UMM three rounds to none. Godzilla was much closer, though, and Leftovers forced UMM to play all three rounds before they got the point. The total accumulated kills point goes to Team UMM, 37 to 14. Hey, if you'd like to administer a beating to Team UMM, please visit our website at g4tv.com slash arena and let us know. And remember, kids, these are all 3D models in a computer game. None of this is real, except for the monsters. The monsters are very real, and they're on their way to your house. I'm Will Wheaton. You're freaking me out, Will. And I'm Travis Oates. We'll see you next time in the arena. Monsters! <laughs> oh!